Hey everybody, it's Kate Richberg, and I am live from my jewelry studio this morning. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Pardon me, I know a lot of you uh, watch me on my regular broadcasts uh, on Wednesday and Friday over at beadshop.com, but we're doing um, uh, something a little bit different in conjunction with bead fest and uh, jewelry making daily. Um, so I'm very excited and um, pleased uh, that bead fest and uh, interweave asked me to do this fun little broadcast as a fun little promotion um, for bead fest Philly that's coming up in uh, in just a couple of weeks. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about that. So um, we are gonna go through and um, I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks. Right now I'm sharing this on my various social medias, so I would love it if you did the same so we can spread the word. And our dear Tammy Jones from Interweave, um, has just jumped on as well. Uh, thank you so much, Tammy, for inviting me uh, and creating uh, this fun forum um, to uh, to have uh, everybody together. My dear friend Gita, Gita just jumped in. For those of you who know um, my Wednesday and Friday broadcasts on beadshop.com, you'll know that Gita is uh, a wonderful friend to bead shop over across the miles and does so much of us so much for us so thank you so much Gita as always for your support on our lives I really really appreciate it I'm going to share this out one more time um, and then we can jump in and get started i'm really excited uh, uh to share things with you wonderful well tammy it's it's certainly my pleasure so i've gone on i've shared everything oh my mama is here my mom and dad are here i love it you know what it's great having supportive parents and mine are the best so thank you thank you all for coming um, okay, so we have uh, a lot of stuff to cover uh, this morning, or at least it's morning where I am in South San Francisco, California. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background because some of you are new to me and to my broadcasts. Some of you are old pros, uh, but I wanted to um, uh, share with you a couple of uh, things so I can show you uh, a, a little bit about the things that I have done. I'm gonna turn this right around. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Persephone, look, you, I can you can see my <laughs> my iPad. Let me get that out of the way so I can see your comments and stuff as well. So. Um, for those of you, uh, some of you have my uh, my book. This is my first book, Simple Soldering, um, published by uh, Interweave Press, an imprint of F and W Media. Uh, that uh, Bead Fest is uh, is a part of the F and W Media family. Um, and this was my first book that came out, Simple Soldering, and uh, many of you have uh, purchased it uh, with my thanks. And if you are interested in all, some of you I know are beginning metalsmiths or thinking about jumping into metalsmithing, um, Simple Soldering is a great way to get started. Um, I've kind of people ask me, well, Kate, how long did it take you to write this book? And I say, you know what? My whole career, it took me 20, 25 years to write this book. But it's a great, um, helpful tool for those of you who are just jumping in and are not really sure about where to go and what to do. Um, we, um, this book really um, is meant to be read start to finish. And then you can jump in and start to play. It's it's also written for the small space uh, solderer in mind, um, and it really uh, I think addresses issues when you're working in a small space. Tammy just threw the link up right there, which is great. And you can also find my second book. And you know what? I sold my last copy of it. I'll have them at Beadvest. But my <clears throat> second book is called Metal Smithing Made Easy, and it's a great companion. 
um, volume to this as well, so you can find both of those there. Also, um, Tammy uh, will, I'm sure, put up the link to a great interweave resource called uh, Jewelry Making Daily. And Jewelry Making Daily uh, is um, a great place on the web where you can find a lot of kind of the instructors that you know and love from, um, you know, the Bead Fest classes and from books and stuff like that. So um, you can jump on... Uh, um, and join the Jewelry Making Daily email newsletter. There's a wealth of information that Tammy corrals, uh, corrals over there. There's also uh, beading, um, uh, beaded jewelry daily, I think. There's one that's for metalsmithing, one more for, uh, for beading, and they're great, great resources. You can also find, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put my card right here in the middle. You can find me if you're enjoying this broadcast or enjoy what I do today. I also do a broadcast every Wednesday and Friday from my online home, beadshop.com. And at Bead Shop, um, I come on with uh, my dear friend Emily Miller, sometimes our dear uh, fearless leader Janice Parsons, and every Wednesday we teach a wonderful class. Sometimes it's wire, sometimes it's beading. Eventually we'll get into flame work, we're not quite there yet. But then I also do a um, class on Friday, it's called Free Tip Friday. So if you go over to beadshop.com, put yourself on our email list, you will get notifications about that, plus all of the other fun things that we do. Um, we travel, we teach, we do all kinds of fun stuff. And if you're looking for online classes, you can find them there. So, uh, but again, jump on also to um, Jewelry Making Daily and um, beading, making da uh, beading Daily, and you'll get a whole wealth of info in your, um, in your inbox. Let me turn this around so I'm facing you again. Here I am. And let's get down to the nitty gritty, okay? Because we've got some stuff to accomplish today. Um, so, oh, and do let me also give a plug. I plugged everybody. Thank you, Gita, for throwing those links up as well. I super, super appreciate it. Um, you can also find me on my personal website, katerichberg.com. You can follow me there. I have a list of where I teach classes, and I also teach classes here in my studio in South San Francisco. Um, so I'd love to see you wherever our paths cross. Okay, so, but today, dear ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk rings, right? Now, when I first started making jewelry, um, rings were always something that I loved. I thought, wow, you know, what if I could really make a ring? Wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever? And it is the coolest thing ever, right? So rings, I think people sometimes think that rings are harder than they actually are. The thing that's the most difficult, I think, or the most challenging is making that bezel to fit the stone, right? There's, you know, lots of things to take into consideration. And so I wanted to share with you today a little sneak peek on how I measure bezel wire uh, for the stone, for a cabochon stone. Um, it seems, you know, I, I make it look pretty easy. So, it, and it is pretty easy. You know, I've been doing this for a while, but it, I think there'll be some great tips for you to incorporate. So let me move the camera around here um, and we can take a look at what is in front of me on my desk. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the tools that we're gonna need that we're going to use. Oh, I see so many people who are coming on and saying hello, and I'm going to see you at Bead Fest. Yes, I can't wait to see everyone. You know, the Bead Fest Philly is coming up soon, and you know, I feel always very um, uh, lucky and honored to be able to teach at Bead Fest. You know, it's such a great get-together of some of the greatest instructors in the country and um, we have such a fun time and uh, for those of you who are on the east coast you know it seems like it's just a hop and a jump um, away from you so you know if you do get a chance to join me or any of our wonderful instructors i do urge you 
to check it out. There's also like make and takes on the show floor. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. So if you can't quite commit to a class, there's all kinds of stuff um, that can happen for you at Beadfest. Also, if you go ahead and sign up on our um, on our beadshop.com website for our newsletter, um, you'll learn about our meet and greet that Janice and I are having. It's gonna take place at my Beadfest classroom, and we would love for you to stop by. I'll have my books, I, or bring your book. I'd love to sign it for you. Um, and we'll have uh, you know some uh, camaraderie and some meetup, and it'll be real fun. But there'll be more info on that um, coming out on our beadshop.com newsletter. That'll happen Saturday, the Saturday, um, uh, afternoon of the show after my class. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what we've got going on here. So let me show you this ring. This is one that I've made that I wear all the flipping time. I love this ring. Um, and you can see I've used some Kingman turquoise um, that my buddy actually, Katie Hacker, picked up for me when she was traveling through Arizona once. Uh, so this has a little bit of a touchstone for me. Whenever I look at it, I think of my buddy, Katie Hacker. Um, and uh, you can see it's set, a, a cabochon stone, a stone like this. I have one here um, that's unset. Um, this turquoise, also Kingman, right here, and a lot of times these turquoise are stabilized and backed so that they're nice and flat. So when you go ahead and set them, like if I were going to put them on, on a backing, they sit nice and flat. Okay, so that's one of the requirements of setting a stone like this, a cabochon stone, we call it, um, that it needs to be flat up onto the back plate. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So to hold that cabochon stone on the ring, we use what's called bezel wire. And a lot of you know this already, and I'm sure that some of you have actually um, set stones and stuff before. But here is the bezel wire that's holding the stone in. And this is what sometimes it can give you a few fits when you're trying to size it. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So the, the wire that I'm using, or that I used for this one, is a serrated bezel wire, okay? And serrated bezel wire simply means that it's serrated and not plain. And you can see how it adds a little bit of interest and beauty to the front of that stone. Also, one of the things that I think newbies, they do when they're starting to, to set their stones is they make their bezel too tall and they try and fold the bezel over and you start to get little wrinkles and crinkles in the bezel, right? We wanna make sure to really size the bezel wire, the bezel wire so it's perfectly sized to the height of the stone, okay? So we really wanna make sure that that's, that's a consideration, okay? We can also use different types of bezel wire. <clears throat> I have some in front of me. I have just plain bezel wire, which is what I'm gonna be using today. This is 3 16 inch bezel wire, and I know your next question is, Kate, how thick is that bezel wire? This is about a 28 gauge here. Now, you could use heavier bezel wire if you wanted, if you wanted to create a heavier bezel like the ring that I'm wearing here. I fabricated this bezel actually just out of um, some gold and I made it pretty heavy, pretty thick. Um, but that um, <clears throat> this guy here, about 28 gauge will work, uh, 30 gauge will work. It just depends on what you like, uh, the, the like, uh, what, how you like your bezels to look, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it can be, here's another one with that serrated wire, right? We've got this here. And <clears throat> this one here, and I'm not gonna show you how to do this today, but um, these guys here, if you're unsure about um, setting stones and kind of wanna start out with it, uh, something kind of easy, these are bezel cups. Okay, and the cup comes already made, already fabricated, and you just solder it on and drop the stone in. So it's a, kind of an easy, quick way to get stones onto your pieces. And I 
use them a lot. See, I've used them again with these little rubies on this ring here. So I mix and match them, sometimes prefabricated with fabricated pieces that I make. And Trish is asking, could you or would you cut a design on the bezel wire to add to your design? That is a great question, Trish. Let me see if I can locate. I had an earring here <clears throat> that I want to show you. Some of you have seen these earrings. This is a little bit of a departure, but I want to share this with you. This is um, bezel wire, scalloped bezel wire that I used on the back of this earring, okay? And can you see here how I've got this little scallop, 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 like so? And I have stamped this scallop using some um, stamps that I got from my buddy Danny Wade over at Faro Valley Stamps. Um, and so you could certainly stamp this bezel wire and use it on a ring, but I stamped this bezel wire and just used it on this earring as an embellishment. So you sure could. And again, this is that thin bezel wire. This is 28 gauge, so it stamps, uh, it stamps just fine. Judy was asking <clears throat> about a source for bezel cups and stones. You know, you can find them. I do sell them in my class um, live um, in person, but you can also go to my buddies beejucation.com, and I believe that Lisa carries a variety of bezel cups and stones there on beejucation. Um, you can see here, this is actually a piece that I did in class. Um, in my ring class, I think it was a demo piece, so it's a little rough. I think I just had to decline a call. Sorry, I didn't put my phone on silent. Oh, how embarrassing. So sorry. Um, but you can see I've stamped the back plate and I've used a bezel cup right there. And then I have a bezel wire that's a little bit heavier. This actually might be 24 gauge that I use, something a little bit heavier, okay? You can also use a variety of different punches. You can see, again, I've used some stamps from my buddies over at Beach Occasion, some stamps from Danny Wade, um, kind of a cool plate from my buddy Hector Ortega. And you can see, let me take the price tag off of the back of this, you can see how this is dimensional. So rings really, I really feel are the sky is the limit, okay? So let's get, let's get going with, uh, with measuring that bezel, okay? Um, the camera shifted. Can you see now? Is that okay? Are we good? Can you give me thumbs up if you can see okay with that? Um, sometimes also if you're watching on your phone, it's hard to see at the bottom part of your screen, so I'll try and stay in the top part. So give me some thumbs up if everything's okay with that, okay? So um, this piece here that I have, this is, um, gosh, let me see. Let me, let me flip this around so you can see me. There I am. And then let me flip it back around. There we go. Is that a little bit better? I hope that's better um, that you guys can see that. All right. Let me know. Give me some direction. Um, this ring is also this plate here. Um, has been made uh, with a jewelry die from my buddy Kevin Potter from Potter USA. I just wanted to give him a quick shout out. Um, some of you I know love and follow Potter USA tools, so I think you'll um, you'll love it. Okay, if you go ahead and check him out. So let me turn this around, or let me let me move this here, <clears throat> so you guys can see what's going on, and move the camera to the left. Um, there we go, my left, your left. I hope this is okay. So here I have um, my bezel wire here, and I'm gonna, um, I need to be able to figure out how to measure this bezel wire exactly right so it fits around this stone, okay? So I have a little trick for you guys. And you could, Ellen asks, if we don't have any bezel wire on hand, can we fabricate some from 24, 28 gauge sheet? By all means, you certainly can. Um, when in doubt, fabricate, right? You certainly can. So what I have here in front of me is a little bit of tape. It's a little washi tape that has a grid on it. And what I do is I cut a piece of that tape and then I cut a little strip from that like this that I have here. Now this little strip, what I do is I trim the end of the strip so I have a nice 
flush end like this, okay? Whoops, let me see, of the tray that I'm working over. Oh, okay. Well, it's looking okay on my phone. I'm sorry, you guys, that I'm having trouble. Let me actually, um, I'm gonna move actually over to my soldering station so you guys might be able to see this a little bit better. Okay, so bear with me here as I move all of this stuff over and you guys hopefully will be able will be able to see. So walk with me, walk with me, walk around my studio. I'll give you a little flash here as I'm as I'm going around and we'll put this we'll put this right up. <clears throat> and um, the um, the company is Potter. USA, P-O-T-T-E-R, for hydraulic presses and stuff like that. You'll find it. There we go. All right. Can you guys see? I'm at my soldering station now, and the camera is up on my, um, is up on my uh, little arm here. So I think you'll be able to see this a little bit better. At least I hope so. Okay. So, <clears throat> so let's, let me move this move all of this stuff out of the way so I've got a work surface for you. And thank you, Tammy, for putting up the link to my class. You know, I'm super lucky that my, um, that my uh, Bead Fest classes are actually almost full. I'm actually almost a little terrified. I've got almost 80 students over the four days. But you know what? Teaching is my is my jam, so I am ready for all of you. So I'm very excited to see all of you, but I do have some um, room in my ring making class. So um, I hope to see you if you have time. Okay, so the coin is about center, if that helps. Really, really, the coin is way over here that I'm, I don't know why. It may also be, because it looks really centered on my camera, so I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just gonna try and try and accommodate everybody here as I'm as I'm working with this. So, <clears throat> what I've done with my um, with my cabochon here is I've cut this piece of tape and I've sliced it right on the end so it's nice and even. Now I'm going to pretend that that is my bezel, okay? And I'm just going to wrap that tape around, around my stone, right around the bottom, right? Wrap it around, wrap it around. Here it is, here it is. Okay, great. I'm glad that the view is okay for everyone. And see here, <clears throat> you guys, how I can kind of overlap and I can see, I can kind of see where that overlap happens. Let me see if I can really get it nice and tight. See how the line right at the top and the line underneath are kind of lining up, right? So I'm gonna get my scissors. I'm going to kind of hold that little line in my mind and cut right, let me pull it back here, cut right on that grid, okay? <clears throat> Now, you can see, whoops, <laughs> Kate, you cut on the wrong grid. Oh my goodness. Well, it's a good thing I have two pieces of tape in front of me, right? So let me try that one more time. Oh, the perils of live broadcasting, right? It happens to the best of us. Don't worry. And yes, don't worry, you guys, if you've missed any part of this video, not a big deal. We'll have it posted on our bead shop uh, Facebook video feed. I'll keep it here in my feed uh, for Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator, and I am sure you'll also be able to find it on Beadfest's Facebook page as well. So don't don't worry. If you miss anything, you can always watch it on the replay. Okay. So see here. There we go. I've lined it up. Lined it up. It's that line. Okay. That line. Let's cut it on the right one, Richburg. Come on now. I believe it's that one. What do they say? Measure twice, cut once. So let's try that. And I'm going to just cut right here across. Okay. And then, yeah, I'm the boss of this tape, Gita. You are right. 
So see how it comes just next to, it just is like a butt, a butt joint, right? Just like that. Alrighty. So I'm going to peel this tape away. And see how I really was very careful to lay it just perfectly and not have it overlap and not have any wrinkles in the tape, okay? Anything like that, right? So now we need to think about our um, bezel wire. So I'm going to come in. Oops, I forgot my cutters on the other side. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut a nice flush cut at the end of my bezel wire to start. Now you want this cut to be as flush as it can be because, you know, when you're filing metal, right, and I know that you've probably had this problem as well, when you're filing metal, I have a tendency to want to file a curve into things, right? Curve, curve, curve like this. The, the less you screw with the end of this bezel wire, the better off you're going to be when you go to fit it, right? Because remember, one of the tips of one of the rules of, of metal smithing, of soldering, is that your join must be flush, right? You can't, you can't pack solder in there to fill a join. And this is just regular washi tape, you guys, right? Just regular washi. You don't have to use the grid kind. I also use sometimes if I can't find it or if I run out, I just use blue painter's tape. It doesn't have a grid and it doesn't help you quite as much with the measuring, um, but you could also use that as well. <clears throat> okay, so see here, I'm just coming in with my cutter, my beautiful Zuron cutter, and I'm giving it a nice straight across cut. And the way that I visualize a straight cut is I put my cutter up right next to the bezel wire. And where the cutter and the bezel wire meet, I look and see if that looks like a true right angle, okay? You could also use like a little angle measurer and score a little line there and cut on the line. But usually, I think my eyeball is trained enough that I usually get it close to being right. Okay, you're going to hear a little bit of noise on the video because my studio is right next to everybody's mailboxes and it sounds like someone's getting their mail. So uh, bear with me if you hear a little bit of banging. Um, it's just the mailboxes. Okay, so now I also want to um, let you know a tip about sizing. The, if my bezel wire was as super thin as this washi tape, right? All I would have to do is cut this bezel right to spec, right to the length of this tape. But this bezel wire has a little bit of thickness to it, right? It has just shy of a millimeter of thickness to it. So just like when we're making a ring band, we need to add that thickness to the end of our bezel. So can you see here, right at the end, how I've really just kind of eyeballed it. I know from experience from making bezel after bezel that I need just a hardly even a 32nd of an inch, very scant um, bit of metal, just to make sure to add that length to make up for the width of my bezel wire. Okay, does that make sense? And I've put my washi tape right on here, nice and straight. Now I'm gonna get my uh, trusty Zuron cutter and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut this right at a right angle, okay, and clip. And notice how, you guys, I wanted to mention, I do this automatically, but notice how I'm using the flush side of this cutter, of the Zeron cutter, not the, not the curved inside. That curved inside is gonna leave me a little point and not a flush cut. So we want a flush cut as, as flush as we can get on both of these ends of the, um, of the bezel wire. So now, theoretically, you guys, if the soldering and bezel gods are with me, this length right here should wrap around this bezel without any problem. Now, it's really difficult to try and make this bezel nice and round and, um, you know, fit it around the stone. So I'm just gonna trust that it's gonna fit, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm going to put my cutter aside, we're going to put all this aside, and we're going to get my soldering station back here so you guys uh, can see me solder it. Because, you know, why not? 
right? We might as well do it, okay? So when I'm soldering, I, especially with bezels, okay, or with rings, I've got my surface right here. And this is uh, just a rotating soldering pan that has pumice in it. And I have uh, a solderite board on top. I also have underneath here some little pieces of charcoal block that I could do. So, uh, but I'm going to use a solderite board for this. Tammy Hahnemann is on. Thank you, Tammy. It is my pleasure always to do this broadcast for my friends at F and W. I, you guys have done so much for me over the years. So I love giving back and I love sharing. So. Of course, it's my pleasure. So now we're going to bring this around. And the goal is, you guys, is to get this end and this end flush. I'm not gonna worry about round, I'm gonna just worry about flush. So let me get this end in here like this with my chain nose plier, and this end in here with my chain nose plier. Now we need to tension this closed. So I just, you know, I just kind of treat this, you guys, like it's a jump ring, okay? Because it's kind of a jump ring. It's a flat, large jump ring, but it's kind of the same. So when you tension jump rings closed, right? You try and tension them so the little ends, you know, tension together, right? I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna kind of work harden um, that opposite join there so I kind of stiffen up my, my bezel wire. And I'm gonna just get my, my tips and I'm gonna kind of push them over the top back and forth here, like so. Things are starting to tension. The tension is building, right? So I'm gonna come in and I can snap it. Oh, the sovereign gods are with me today. I can snap this together, okay? And I check and make sure that it's flush this way, this way, this way, I check all the way around, right, to make sure it's flush. If it's not quite flush, I can give it a little hug with my chain nose, just like that. But I want to make sure it's nice and straight. The more work you put in right now, the better things are going to be for you down the road. Okay? And I always want to screw with it just a little too much. You know how that is. So, all right, Richburg, put this down. Let's, it's time to solder, okay? So I'm going to put this down on my solderite board. And I'm going to adjust the camera angle, you guys, so you can see a little bit better. So bear with me here while I adjust things. And I think you can see things pretty well right here. I hope you can, okay? And um, you can see I've placed the bezel on my solderite board. And I placed it so that the join is facing away from me, okay? So I can see on the inside. Now, I'm going to use paste solder. Now, I know there's a collective gasp coming from everybody out in jewelry world, right? But those of you who have taken my classes know that I'm a big fan of paste solder, especially if you're just uh, learning, just starting out, right? So, oh... Here, you can only see, is this better? better? Again, let me, let me push this up a little bit so you guys can see. I can see it really well in my camera, so I hope it looks like some of you are having maybe trouble seeing it. So is this, um, is that better? Okay, I hope it is. Give me some thumbs up if you can see that okay. Okay, nope, still. Well, you may want to move your phone around a little bit. My mom's still saying wrong way. I see that some people can see it, but um, just bear with me here a little bit. All right, great, good. I'm glad you guys can see it there. Okay, so I'm going to get some hard paste solder. Can you see that? And I mark little H's on there. This is silver solder um, here with just the paste, okay? And I start by just adding the paste solder right on that, um, right on that join, okay? Whoops, this way. All right, this way, we good? <laughs> Sorry, I guess I better just put the, this way, okay. I guess I better just put this on uh, and not move the camera, okay? So give me some thumbs up there. So I'm gonna put this paste solder on, I'm gonna get my pick. I'm going to extrude a little bit of paste solder out of my um, out of my syringe here, 
and um, I'm going to get my little piece here. Huh, it keeps flipping between, huh, all right, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not showing on my phone, so I'm trying to accommodate everyone. I'm sorry if you're having trouble seeing it. It's really difficult for me to um, to see what you're seeing because it looks just perfect on my screen, so um, sorry about that. Bear with me. It may be a Facebook thing, and I'm sure that if you guys watch it on replay, it should be centered because it's uh, centered um, on my screen here, so I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, that sometimes the, um, the, uh, Facebook just throws us curveballs, right? Okay. I'm not moving rows. I promise. There we go. Okay. So here's my little, um, here's my little, uh, bit of paste solder. It's my hard solder right here. And it's about a three millimeter, two or three millimeter ball of solder. And can you see, I'm going to kind of come up right up close so you guys can see that. Um, that paste solder is just uh, just sitting right there on the join, okay? So the solder is going to kind of run down. It's going to, when the heat hits it, it's going to kind of run down a little bit. Um, and that's okay. As long as the solder is touching the join, we're going to be okay with that, all right? So remember that the paste solder, you're, you guys, um, has flux already in it. It's a binder that has the metal flux, the silver uh, solder, plus the flux in there to help that solder to flow. So it looks like I put just a whole ton of solder on here, but remember that's also the binder and the flux that's in here as well. Now, I did mention there's already flux in this, right? But I like to use a little bit of a spray um, flux as well. This is called Cupronil. Cupronil is kind of my spray flux of choice, and it's spelled C-U-P-R-I-N-I-L, I think, Cupronil. And you can find it right online at anywhere where they sell, um, you know, jewelry supplies, Cupronil. And then I decant it into these little spray bottles just like this, so it makes it easy for me to work with. And can you see, I just sprayed the whole thing just right on my block, so now it's ready to go. So now I'm gonna fire up my torch, you guys. We're gonna get it, get it hot in here, right? And I'm gonna try and kind of throw this into, uh, into the, uh, into the screen here. I'm using the, tor the, the um, torch that I use in all of my classes. It's my um, Max Flame torch, butane torch, perfect for something like this. And I'll flash it after um, when I have the camera full up so you guys can see it as well, okay? But I'm gonna turn the torch on off camera and I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna start by heating this um, bezel with the feathery part of my flame, okay? And remember, as you're soldering, you guys, the it's the metal, the heat of the metal, and not the flame of the torch that causes your solder to flow. So I'm going to get a little closer in with the tip of my flame. I'm not really directing the tip of my flame right onto the metal. I'm just letting that heat deflect off. I'm moving my torch completely around um, so I don't, because I don't want to melt that bezel. And see how that solder has flowed? And now I can pull that solder board around and I can pull, can you see how that solder has flowed through the seam? That's it. Done and done. Get a light touch, breathe through it. It's only flame. You're going to be fine. If you melt your bezel, who cares, right? You've got more bezel wire, right? So just kind of, you know, take the zen of the moment and, and, and just work it through. I'm gonna grab it with my soldering tweezers here and I'm gonna quench, all right? Now, here comes the moment of truth. I'm gonna get rid of this here. I'm gonna put my bezel there and my stone there and let's see if we can make them fit, okay? So, uh, let me get a ring mandrel. It's also on the other side here. Let me grab it. And let's start by shaping 
that um, that bezel right off the bat. Okay, so let me dry it off here on my apron. I'm bringing my ring mandrel in. I use my ring mandrel because it's kind of big, right? And the stone's kind of big. So this is also, it's fine silver, right? My bezel wire, which I neglected to mention earlier. But you can see that there was no fire scale on this, right? So um, we know that this metal is fine silver. I don't want to stretch this right now too much. This metal is really malleable. But I find that working with the ring mandrel really helps me get this pretty nice and round. There's a little bit of a bump right there that I kind of want to burnish out. And I can burnish out using my fingers kind of as well, like that, right? So now, once it's round, I'm going to think about my seam. I'll probably put my seam on the side somewhere a little bit. Um, and I can come back in and I can file this down. But I'm going to kind of smush this. Smush is a technical term. And you guys, look it. <laughs> yes, it fits. I'm super, super excited. Can you see that? All righty. Not too bad. And now we would go through and we would continue to fabricate. We'd continue to do all kinds of stuff. And I would clean up the side of my bezel and stuff like that as well. So, um, so that's it. I did it. Shoo! It's always a moment of truth, you know, when you solder a live on air. And I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see me and I can see you here real quick. There we go. All right. Can you see me? I can see you. Great. So it's always that moment of truth, you know, when you're soldering on live and you're praying to the solder gods, please, please, please let it fit. And it did. So here it is. I can show you that from the front end again. And now I'm ready to, you know, do whatever next steps I want to do with it. But that is really all there is to it. Super easy. Um, I'm going to grab a couple of things here. You guys saw my buddy Lisa Kelly maybe jump on. Hi, Lisa Kelly from Beejucation. We were talking about you a little bit earlier, so I bet your ears were burning. Um, if you did enjoy this broadcast, and I hope you did, uh, you can find my classes and all the other Beadfest classes over on the Beadfest site. If you just go, I think it's beadfest.com. You just Google Beadfest, you'll see that. All of the classes for Philly are there. My classes are getting full. My simple soldering class, I believe, is already full, but I've got some space in others. And there's a whole bunch of other great classes that you guys can take. Um, also, you guys can um, find a lot of uh, what I do right on my website at katerichberg.com. And you can also find me broadcasting every Wednesday and every Friday on my website, beadshop.com. And I do a full, fun, wonderful class. And we have um, people that join us from all over the world. So it's a worldwide bead table that people gather around and we make. Um, oh, it's great. I see so many of you are jumping in and taking my classes. Well, it'll be great to see all of you there. Um, you'll be able to see the replay of this. If you missed the whole thing, don't worry, we're going to post it on our bead shop um, YouTube video stream, and it'll also stay right here on my Kate Richburg uh, Jewelry Educator Facebook page, okay? I also wanted to mention, I have, and I'm going to turn this around so you guys can see this here. Um, you can find, I hope you guys can see this, I did a little coupon just for you guys because I wanted to see how this might come out and, and be viral and, and see if people are using it. Um, if you put in BeadFest20 over on beadshop.com, it's a one-use coupon that is good until 9 30 18. So if you do want to try any fun beading projects or if you need a pair of pliers or whatever it is, you can jump on over BeadFest20 over at beadshop.com, throw it in the coupon code box, and we'll knock 20% off your entire order. Okay, and that's again beadshop.com. And it's good till the end of September. So you have a little bit of time. You can share that out if you'd like. Um, but again, in the coupon code, um, BeadFest20. So I'm going to turn this back around. There we go. I can see you. Um, so thank you so much, Tammy Jones. Thank you so much for having me for this special broadcast with me and BeadFest. Um, I'm going to go back to the office over at Bead Shop and get ready for my broadcast tomorrow so you can see me right on the Bead Shop 
page tomorrow at 10.30 Pacific time. Um, that's on Wednesdays. And you can also catch me on Fridays over for my free tip Fridays on Beach Hop. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys in Philly. If I don't, I'll see you here online. Feel free to reach out. You can always find me at kate at beadshop.com. Thanks so much, you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.